Ever since this year's Petit Le Mans, I've been a little bit obsessed with a particular historic car, this one, the Porsche 911 GT1. Obviously, this car did not race at this year's Petit Le Mans, but its livery sure did in the hands of Porsche North America. They painted both of their 911 RSRs just like this car. One car had yellow trim, the other one had orange trim. The car that had the orange trim ended up going on to take the GT victory. So, why did they do a tribute to this particular livery? Well, this car, the Porsche 911 GT1, actually participated in the inaugural running of the Petit Le Mans in 1998. However, hint, hint, Road Atlanta is not in Project Cars 2. Devs, please get on that, or at least for Project Cars 3 or whatever you end up calling it. Uh, that being said, there are still a few interesting tracks to race this car at, which it did historically in real life. And if you haven't guessed yet, we are here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, which, believe it or not, actually held rounds of the FIA GT Championship in the mid-90s. The last time, I think it was 1998, when they finally held their last race at this track. However, uh, the FIA GT Championship really had a lot of interesting American rounds. They raced at Sebring International Raceway, and believe it or not, they raced at Homestead Miami Speedway. Picture that, GT1 cars going around there. But today we're going to be at Mazda Raceway Laguna Sega. This is one of my favorite, or I think it's WeatherTech Raceway, isn't it? Anyway, uh, we're going to be racing here because it's actually one of my favorite tracks. It's a really great flowing track, a lot of fun to drive at, though it's very challenging in this 911 GT1. It's a turbocharged car, and it really lights up the rears. It's technically a GT car, though I would certainly consider it much closer to a prototype, but it does exhibit some GT car aspects uh, certainly uh, the weight is very much higher than it would be with uh, your conventional 90s prototype like a Ferrari 333 SP or the like. So we are doing a multi-class 20 minute race GT1 and GTO cars just like it would be in the real life 1998 uh, FIA GT series. So without any further ado let's see if I can get Porsche a win at Laguna Seca. All right, so here we are at Mazda Raceway, Laguna Seca, ready to go racing. Got the GT1s out in front of me, got the GTO cars behind, but the important bit are these cars, particularly this Mercedes, which in real life were the arch rival nemesis of this Porsche. So we head into turn one, or I guess turn two, the Andretti hairpin regardless. Underneath one of the Mercedes already looking to the inside of the green one, couldn't quite get him. The Golf McLaren will make the way around me on the outside. Now the inside. Now we're going to slot in right in behind the McLaren. Got around one of the factory Mercedes and now going to be looking a little bit of contact with the Golf McLaren. I almost got a run on him there as that was not the preferred line. I don't think through that corner. Neither was that as I got backed up again. Here comes the Mercedes. Oh, everybody's on the dirt there, and I was too. Got to be so careful of these curbs in this car, I'll tell you. It really, really upsets this car to get on the curbs in the wrong spot. What was the Mercedes doing there? Wow, okay. Was not expecting the Mercedes to try it, Zanardi style. But he did it. So now we got to refocus and try to climb back into the clutches of these McLarens. Thankfully, everybody's holding each other up through the hairpin, down into first gear. Get the car through the gears, heading up the straightaway. This is actually turn one over the crest of this hill, and the car gets very light through there, especially behind other cars as I get the brakes locked up just a little bit there. The rear brakes really like to lock in this car. So that's a concern. It does everything you don't want it to do, to be honest with you. Oh, like that, understeer off into the dirt. Now we're gonna have to try to hold off the Mercedes, not gonna happen. And then I ran wide again, probably had dirt on my tires. So we're gonna have to chase the Merc down now. Thankfully, it seems like the two McLarens out in front will hold him up just a little bit. Wow, I really got to stay off that curb. That's the second lap in a row where things have gone wrong. You just see the car kind of dance when I get on them. 
or at least shoot off in a direction I do not want it to go. So how much issue, or how many issues will this Mercedes have to try to get around the McLarens as he gets a better run out of the hairpin onto the main straightaway. We're gonna draft him over the crest of the hill. Gotta be careful of that. I don't think you can do a blow over here, but uh, I don't wanna be the first guy to do it. So we're gonna be a little bit cautious there as the Mercedes didn't really give you a whole lot of option to sneak underneath him in that particular corner. And that wasn't fantastic either. Again through there. So let's try to find some apexes this time. Didn't quite work as well as I would have hoped. Up and forth. Down the gear. Look for the curbs. Oh, so close to the outside as well. You see the Mercedes is over there on the curbs. I cannot do that. That time I drove a much better line though into the corkscrew. And I really hate this corner of this car. Oh, it's such a pushy corner in this car. It's so heavy, this Porsche GT1, and it just feels again like you should be driving a prototype, you're not. You're driving a GT car. You're slow in, fast out. And you have to realize that these cars are all so very different as well in their architecture, their design, their engines. They're all going to perform differently. So if you see cars, they're faster in one section of the course, you just can't let it get in your head. You've got to think that that Mercedes is slow in X, Y, and Z corner, and you're going to be slow in X, Y, and Z corner. And you just have to be able to compromise and figure out where you can attack and where you cannot, where you have to drive conservatively and where you can drive aggressively. Back end coming loose. This kind of goes into push, into snap oversteer. That's no bueno driving, no bueno driving. As we head up the Ray Hall straight, looking for the corkscrew going right over. Oh man, the Mercedes and the McLaren have more contact. Can't imagine that's going to help the already lacking front downforce on this Porsche. So I used a little too much of the curb there on the inside. And through the gears again, we're looking at the back of this Mercedes. D2. Seemed to be on all the Mercedes cars back in this day. I don't even know what that means. I think it's some German thing, but I don't know. You'll have to let me know. Oh, so I did not get the best run out of there either. Down of gear using a little bit of the exit curve. You gotta be careful because the turbo can spool up when you're on that exit curve and around you'll go. Mercedes tried a, an interesting move there. That's not necessarily a passing zone on this track. Oh, the Mercedes is for sure faster than the McLaren, but he can't get around him. One part of that statement sounds uh, like a 2018 racing quote. The other part necessarily doesn't. The thing about the McLaren is, too, it's a 97 model car. The rest of the uh, GT1 cars... Oh, that was so close. That was so close. The rest of the GT1 cars are 98 models. So that probably doesn't work in the McLaren's favor. You can just see how upset the car was the whole way through the final sector of the lap. And it all started when, I, when the car got upset over that exit curb. I still don't know how I saved it. Only ABS in this car, no traction control. The only car in the GT1 class that has it is the GT1, and that car is about as close to a prototype as you're ever going to get. Oh! 
Oh, man. The back end was coming around. I felt it. I saved it somehow. Now I've got to be careful. I've got to, to clean this driving up. Because making those mistakes, you can see how much further I've fallen behind. There we go. Okay. So I got through there without any trouble. Got through there without any trouble. So we can build the confidence back up. I think one of the Mercedes or the Mercedes has gotten around the Gulf McLaren. It's hard to tell from back here, but I think that might have happened. Nope, I'm wrong. The Mercedes is still back there. It's hard to tell because the silver of the Mercedes kind of looks a little bit like the Gulf blue that adorns the Gulf car from a distance. Oh, so we got a big oversteer through there. Boy, that Mercedes is still all over the back of the McLaren and still cannot get around him. Starting to put it together now, a little bit better. Why did you use the curve there, David? That was so stupid. But I got away with it. All right, got through the exit there. All those cars are so tantalizingly close together. So I locked the brakes up into the hairpin, which is kind of stupid of me. And I worked down the main stretch. Into the Andretti hairpin. On the throttle. Ten minutes remaining. So there you go, halfway part in the race. I've only almost died a couple of times. Ay, ay, ay. Again, just tried to take too much speed and the thing speared off at the front. No front end grip. And there you go. You can see it kind of kick out on me on the exit as well. Now the McLaren and the Mercedes are way off in the distance. I don't know if we'll be able to catch the back of the GTO field before the end of the race. That would be something I'm kind of curious about. Oh, no, 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 no! Well, let's see if we can still drive with it. No, it's it's not working. No bueno. No bueno. Oh, and way off the road we're going to go. Well, unfortunately, I think this is going to be a retirement. Because I don't see how I can drive this thing very well. Yeah, I may have to redo this video at some point because, um, yeah, this is a super tough truck car to drive on this track. So very difficult. Well, yeah, let's, um, that's unfortunate. Well, I guess we'll just take a look at the results here in a second. And then, uh, and then uh, I'll bid you adieu. I'm... So sorry to Porsche, I could not get it done. Actually, it's kind of interesting. In the real life race, uh, I actually watched it before this. Uh, one of the drivers, I think it was Alan McNish, who drove this car, by the way, had a spin and a crash. So I guess, you know, if Alan McNish does it, I guess I can't feel too bad about uh, not being able to, to handle this car around this track. Because uh, even one of the best to ever do it couldn't do it.
So it was actually Ferrari taking the overall win over Mercedes McLaren. The McLarens actually got around one of the Mercedes and the factory car ended up finishing at the back of the cars that actually were running at the end of the race. We actually had a uh, Lamborghini win uh, go first and second in the GTO class and then uh, it's all Mustangs from there. I retired on lap number eight exactly almost halfway through the race. But if you look at the lap times, we're right there, right around where we should be in terms of uh, pace. It's just kind of unfortunate. Yeah, I, I definitely need a better setup for this particular track. I know in real life uh, they added dive planes to the front of the car, and I can tell why they did because on a track like this, unlike like Le Mans or maybe some of the European tracks that they ran on, this is an incredibly tight uh, downforce heavy circuit and you need all of that to uh, be good and comfortable around here. So that was an abbreviated FIA GT race but I did actually have fun. You may believe it or not this was quite fun to duel with the McLaren and the Mercedes. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was definitely a historical, uh, a historically accurate race and it's always fun to have those when you get random AI. It's just a shame that I didn't have a, an extra Porsche in there to really uh, take the fight to the Mercedes and uh, certainly have the Porsche mechanics there helping me set the car up. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this, enjoy motorsport content, enjoy sports car content, enjoy Project Cars 2 content, you're in the right place. Be sure to subscribe for more, and we'll see you in the next video.